Welcome, collectors, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Diecast Emporium. Let's just get straight into it. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Mix 4 for 2021 of the Matchbox Real Working Rigs. Surprisingly, I was able to find these on the pegs at a local Walmart. Interesting to note that uh, unlike most assortments of the Matchbox Real Working Rigs, this assortment has an uneven number for the models in it and only three... Uh, I, don't, I don't even want to say new castings because they're not, um, but only three new releases, if you will, for this series. So there's number 13, 14, and 15. Uh, we're going to go out of order, obviously. As you can see in the bottom left, this is number 14. Uh, again, there's only three new ones. There's a bunch of uh, box fillers, if you will placeholders is another term that gets thrown around a lot so bottom line if you are looking for these on the pegs be sure to look for just the three that you see in this video all right so this is the crop sprayer there are there is only one of these in the box so this might be the one that's a little bit hard to find obviously this vehicle is used to fertilize and spray crops so it is based on a real vehicle of course there is no license though uh, crop sprayer down here. You can see the nice card art with it. Matchbox working rigs. And as I mentioned before, number 14 of 16 for the year. This picture shows you how to put the spray bars on. On the back, once again, crop sprayer, Mattel, empowering the next generation through play. And again, up here, you see, can see 14 out of 16. So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. While I'm doing this again, it bears repeating. These are hitting stores now. And uh, again, I found this at a Walmart, but you might be able to find these at Meyer or Target, really wherever these are sold. They were not very difficult to get a hold of. Again, there was only one of these hanging on the pet. So the other ones that you'll see in this video, there are numerous ones. There's one spray bar, and here is the other spray bar, which is a little bit reluctant to come out, but we're gonna get him out Whatever it takes here. There we go. So the spray bars are plastic. As you can see, here's a close-up look at one of these. And these would be very nice to actually paint and detail the hose lines and such on here. All right, let's get these on. I believe they just mount according to the box. Yeah, it looks like they just mount on the end of this part here. So go ahead and get him hooked on here. There we go, there's one, and then here's the other one. So as you can see, it's a pretty impressive vehicle once both arms are hooked up. You can see that it takes up a lot of surface area there. You can also move this up and down, and when it's not spraying, you can also close these up nice and tight when the vehicle is parked. Now I think these are supposed to hook over somehow or at least to sit on top of this. But either way, there you go. You can hook them over just like this. In terms of the detail that's on this, let's take these bars off so we can get a better look at it now that we know how they work. You have crop sprayer right here. We're going to, again, zoom in on this just a little bit, give you guys a better look at it. There we go. All right, so we've got crop sprayer right here. Again, apologize about the camera. That's what you do when you get these things live. All right, so we've got crop sprayer here. We've got farm fresh decal here. We've got an organic logo right on top of the tank. So obviously kind of giving you the impression that this would spray manure along other things, obviously pesticides, things of that nature. This piece is plastic. Uh, the base or the body of the vehicle is die cast. The base is also die cast. The gold wheels do look nice on it as well. You have matchbox written here in red up on top of the tank. There's an exhaust tank, your, your exhaust stack here. The interior of the vehicle towards the front has a operator seat and a small steering wheel. And the crop sprayer will roll freely on its four wheels. So let me know what you guys think of this one. This is, I think, the third or fourth time we've seen this released in the Real Working Rigs, but it has been a while, several, several years, 
uh, since this has been introduced to the line, so I'm sure this will be probably quite popular. That being said, it is a very specialized vehicle, so I'm not sure how many people, in terms of the collector community as a whole, uh, will take a liking to this. But overall, it's not too terrible. Looks halfway decent. All right, let's move on to the next one. Again, going out of order, I'm going to save what I think is the best in this batch for last. Here's another one that we have seen before, in fact, just a couple years ago in this exact same livery. Number 15 of 16, this is the GMC 3500 attenuator truck. In fact, we've also seen this uh, a couple times this year, haven't we? In yellow, and then there was the white and blue one. So, at least the fourth time that we've seen this, but second time in this exact highway services livery. There's a look at the card. You can see over here the attenuator element that flips down. On the back, the GM logo. General Motors use under license to Mattel. And again, demonstrating the working functions along with the aero board as well as the attenuator. Okay, let's get this open. Now, I've said this, I think, in every single time that we've looked at the real working rigs and there's been an attenuator truck in it, but... In case there's somebody new watching, attenuator trucks are most often found when there's road construction going on, and they're used as a cushion vehicle, a protection vehicle for the workers in the construction zone. And that's because the attenuator part, or this cushion part, where it says lane closed ahead, this is often deployed downwards as an impact zone to catch an unsuspecting driver so that the driver hits the cushion and obviously not the workers in the construction zone. As far as I can tell, the paint is the same that we have seen before with this livery, the same style of orange. I don't think there's that, there's too much detraction in the paint. Uh, you do have the arrow board, which functions as well. You can remove it and post the arrow going to the right if you don't want it going to the left. So there's a little bit of added functionality there. If you guys would like to see uh, the other attenuator trucks, I have them right here. Give me a minute, I will pull them out. I have the yellow one and the blue and white one, so we can get a comparison of all of them. So here's the yellow one, and here is the white and blue one. As far as I'm concerned, though, the orange is the most realistic one that you'd see anywhere, so that happens to be my favorite. There should be two of those in the case because there were two orange ones hanging on the peg when I found them. Of course, I only picked up one of them. Again, I have no idea what the exact assortment is. I have yet to see any of the dealers post pictures of a, either, a, either a case unboxing uh, or even a picture of the assortment, so I'm purely going off speculation based on what I've seen on the pegs. Um, but again, I think it's safe to assume that there's probably two of these in the case, but definitely uh, only one crop sprayer. Okay, let's move on to the last one. There was also one of these, one of the yellow ones, um, on the pegs. So I don't know if this was another one of the placeholders that was in the case or if it was just held over from the last time. And then the other thing that they had multiples on the pegs was this Ranek scraper, which, again, we have seen both of these before in other Real Working Rigs videos on this channel, so we're not going to spend any time on those at all. If you're interested, check out the link at the top of your screen, and uh, you can check out the videos on those. All right, on to my favorite from this batch, and the last that we will be looking at. This is number 13 of 16. This is the Freightliner M2 106 satellite truck, or the TV news truck for short. Licensed by Freightliner. When you're talking about scale, in my opinion, this scales out almost perfectly to 187 or HO scale, which makes it ideal for those of us that have model railroads or those of us that collect trucks in that scale, HO scale. Also makes a great starting vehicle for a customization and I'll show you the one that I have customized as well because I picked up two of these one to do for this unboxing and review and then one to customize on the back again same thing all of your copyright information and then this picture up here showing you that the satellite dishes deploy upwards and can spin around so let's unbox it the uh, chassis components on this truck so the base is die cast or metal 
and then the rest of the truck body, so this portion right here, is uh, this is plastic. The cab is die cast as well. Your satellite dishes, which of course popped off during the unboxing, but they just go right on like that. They are obviously plastic as well. So your satellite dishes, now that they're up, you can rotate them 360 degrees, as you can see here, or fold them down for when the vehicle is traveling. Same thing with the front ones. Again, for the adults that are watching this video that intend to give these as a gift to younger children, be aware that these are choking hazards and can pop off rather easily. All right, onwards with the deco that Matchbox has designed on this truck, which I think looks pretty realistic. You have MBTV Worldwide Streaming TV. So, you, so actually, you can set this up, really, if you're modeling a sporting event uh, or, you know, anything. You could have this set up as your vehicle that's streaming whatever live event is going on, maybe a parade. It doesn't really matter. So I think the decision by Matchbox to actually do this livery is, is kind of nice. Conversely, you can strip this completely and then you can redo it in either a mobile command center for a police or fire department, or you can do it in your own uh, local TV news van livery if you wish to do that. Pretty easy to undo these. Just a couple rivets to drill out. So that's the base model. Here, I told you I picked up two of them. Here is mine that I spent a few hours on the other day trying to make look somewhat decent. I think it I think I succeeded somewhat. Probably a few more things I'll do on this. Uh, but for now, this is kind of what I've come up with here. So Obviously, some subtle changes that you'll notice immediately. I've added some antennas. I've added some paint and lights, license plate, uh, new wheels and tires, give it a much more realistic profile. Um, I painted the grill and the headlights and the Freightliner logo with a silver metallic uh, paint paint pen. So it has that, um, that reflective and chrome look to it, which I think turned out really really well uh, unfortunately and I tried to hide this with the license plate but you can still pretty easily tell the when I drilled this out the front bumper cracked in half so you can see that crack um, but other than that it was really easy to disassemble this and paint this I do intend to paint the ladder here probably in black or silver one of the two and uh, I do plan on painting some of the elements up on top as well you can see these different wires and other things going to the dishes. And, and I also painted the running lights, the orange marker lights up on top of the cab as well. Just goes to show you what you can do with some of these Matchbox rear working rigs, especially the ones that scale out close to HO scale. You can take a halfway decent toy and turn it into a halfway decent model. Uh, this is just the latest example that I have done. And again, for those that are far more skilled than I am, you can completely go out, out with this with totally stripping it, totally repainting it, and, uh, you know, turning it in, as I said before, a command center or, you know, a local TV news fan uh, that's local to your area. So that will conclude this round of Mix 4 for 2021 of the Matchbox Working Rigs, formerly known as the Real Working Rigs. I think that there is going to be one more batch because we're still kind of waiting on a couple vehicles. Obviously, these were 13, 14, 15. The collection goes up to 16. Um, so I don't know if we're going to see 16 or if these are going to be it for the year. I have no idea as of the time that I'm filming this video. Point being, three new additions that look pretty darn good. You guys let me know down in the comments section below which of these three you will be looking to pick up in your collection, which of these you like the most. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care and be safe. And I will see you in the next Diecast Emporium review.